I'm riding around a racetrack. While I'm here at the Augmented World Expo in Long Beach, you can see the Apple Vision Pro and MetaQuest 3 all over the show floor for things like haptics and art experiences, riding horses around in mixed reality on the show floor, or for things like drawing and art with like things like Logitech's mixed reality pen. That's because they're the most versatile building blocks that, that are available right now, but they're big. Then the next step is to make these things smaller. And there are companies showing how that can be done. First of all, the lenses. I met with a company called Loomis talking about how small and good the lenses can be for projecting displays. And they looked really good. The question is who's going to adopt them? There are also companies like Avagant that are building light engines, ways to shrink down the ways that you project onto those glasses. There are also companies trying to track how to do hand gestures because a lot of those expensive mixed reality headsets, well, they have their own built-in power-hungry sensors right on here. One company, Ultraleap, is showing how you can have low-power cameras built into a hacked version of Meta's Ray-Ban glasses to do things like micro gestures uh, on the go. And eventually, Meta's Ray-Bans may get cameras like that or other future smart glasses. Also, there's your watch. There are so many ways that your watch could work as a connected interface, and I've been waiting for that. Double Point is one company I saw here that's using gestures to control your TV or smart lights. And eventually, yes, work with glasses as well. And they're using a, a modified uh, software package on Samsung watches. There's also Tap XR that's doing its own custom-built wearable that has a camera and some sensory capabilities to do that type of stuff. So I saw companies kind of offloading that, and it doesn't feel like we're far away from having that then work with the glasses. But again, it gets to what's the software. AI is all over the place right now. And you can see companies pivoting. Of course they would because it's a big hype-filled thing. But there are also useful things that AI can do on glasses. You could identify things by asking about them. You could have it eventually begin to recognize things and assist you. Meta's experimenting with this already. And the limit to that, though, is that you're going to have to figure out how to deliver those services over into some processor that you're carrying with you. These glasses are not enough. Meta's Ray-Bans pair with your phone. X-Reels connect with your phone. X-Reel actually built its own little device that looks like a phone called the Beam Pro. This $200 basically almost phone that's an Android-powered thing, it's trying to be the phone concept for a world where phones don't perfectly work with AR glasses yet. And Xreal's product has uh, the ability to you know, become a touchpad or launch apps in mixed reality and cast them up and make them more compatible instead of just mirroring your display. And it also has an extra pass-through USB-C port for charging while also wearing the glasses. It takes spatial photos with more widely spaced cameras. Some of these ideas are probably going to come to phones, but the phone compatibility for these is already really inconsistent. And then you've got the wild cards, like haptic gloves. There are giant ones like haptics. There are mid-range ones like Sense Glove that pull back on your fingers and also vibrate and also have something that squeezes your hand. And then there's B-Haptics, which basically has a whole bunch of vibrating motors all over your body on, on vests and, and wrist pieces and gloves. And a lot of this may sound really gimmicky, but I also saw a really moving art piece called I Will Defy You that moved me to tears and used haptics to express the emotions of somebody who had survived an attempted electroshock gender conversion therapy experience. I'm feeling moved even talking about it. Those vibrations gave me a sense of connection. Haptics is trying out new sensations that will eventually kind of create sensations of emotion or connect to things that we tag to emotion. I don't think we have a clear understanding of where all these pieces will come next, and so I'm not ready to dismiss any one of them yet. As you walk around the show like AWE, it's all experimental. All of these pieces are, are trying to find one bit here, one bit here. Some of it's practical, some of it's wild, and the big companies like Apple and Meta are not that present here. So these companies are trying to find a way to explore the future, and I think the future is a moving point. We don't have a product that's perfect yet. We don't have the iPhone of your perfect wearable glasses yet. I think they're gonna be something like this. I think they're gonna work with your hands. I think they're gonna be AI powered. And I think they're gonna work as displays sometimes or also be headphones and also be glasses. Probably will take a couple of years to get there. You're seeing just the beginning steps of that here, but it feels a lot more possible now than it did before. I just don't know when I'm gonna be able to buy the perfect one yet.